Electronegativity, attracting electrons. So, when two atoms form a bond, each atom attracts the other atoms' electrons in addition to its own. So the electronegativity of an atom is the measure of an atom's ability to attract the electrons okay, that are formed in a chemical bond. So we're going to use the symbol EN to show electronegativity. So electronegativity is the periodic property of atoms that are involved in chemical bonds. So EN, so the electronegativity, as we uh, move up the group, and across the period increases. Okay, so really very similar to what we've seen in terms of electron affinity and, um, and atomic size. So let's look at what we, we talked about in the previous lesson about uh, some of the other periodic trends and compare it. So we've seen this before. We've seen the following um, periodic table before uh, when looking at trends in the periodic table. And how do we know the, um, the direction in which the um, electronegativity increases? Well, as we said, if we look at, if we know what the atomic radius is, okay, and we look at the direction in which it's doing whatever it's doing, if it's increasing or decreasing, remember that, as we said before, the electron affinity and the ionization energy is always the reverse of the reverse of whatever the atomic size is. So the uh, electronegativity is no different. So the electronegativity, neg I can't even spell it. The electro electronegativity is also the reverse of the atomic size. So the trends for electronegativity is the reverse of the trend for atomic size, similar to the ionization energy and electron affinity, just what we show, I showed you a moment ago on the periodic table. So as the atomic size decreases from left to right, okay, across the period, electronegativity increases. Okay? So what do we have here? Well, atomic size decreases. Electronegativity increases. Why? So let's look at why that does. So, because the number of protons in the nucleus increases, right? Because as we said, as we move in this direction on the periodic table, the atomic number increases, which means we are also increasing in the number of protons. So at the same time, the number of filled inner electron energy levels okay, uh, remains the same. So we keep adding an electron also when we're going. So we're adding protons, we're adding electrons to the atom. And the atom is now being pulled more tightly to the nucleus, resulting in a smaller atomic size. Okay. And in turn, the atom attracts a bonding pair of electrons more strongly because the bonding pair can move closer to the nucleus. Okay. So, ionic versus covalent. You should already know this, but let's, uh, let's recap some of this stuff. Ionic compounds are compounds that are comprised of a metal and a non-metal. Ionic compounds form repeating units. Reason for that is, well, opposite charges attract. So let's look at an example here, a uh, very common one used in chemistry is sodium chloride. So we know if we look at an atom of sodium chloride, we have Na and... We have Cl, okay, um, and we know that Na is a positive charge, chlorine is a negative charge. So there's an attraction because they are opposite, oppositely charged, okay, there is a charge between them. But now we're going to have another Na and another Cl, right? Why? Because now the Cl, which is negative, is attracted to the positive Na, the Na attracted to the negative Cl, okay? So, and then underneath here, Cl, Na, Cl, Na, okay? So, notice here, whenever we have sodium chloride, they form, it could be millions, okay, like, it, like a, a great amount of 
atoms that are bonded together to represent sodium chloride. Why? Because there's, a, there's this attraction of opposite charges. Okay. There is an attraction within the positives and negatives of within ionic compounds. But now, covalent compounds share their electrons. They form distinct molecules. So let's look at a very common molecule such as H2O. So we're going to have oxygen. Okay, and ball and stick. Actually, I shouldn't have done that. H. And as we're going to see um, in a moment, if we look at uh, uh, oxygen, oxygen is going to have a pair of, uh, or sorry, two pairs of um, shared electrons surrounding it, which makes oxygen slightly negative, which in turn makes hydrogen slightly positive. And we're going to see a little bit more about that in a second. Now, when water forms a bond, water is being attached to another molecule of water because of the attraction between the positive, the slightly positive hydrogen with the slightly negative oxygen. And so, and this kind of attraction occurs between covalent compounds. And covalent compounds, a distinct molecule. Here's the one molecule. Okay, but here in terms of NaCl, all this NaCl. So, so they form a, a, long, a very big unit that can be put together. But here we're looking at a, at a very distinct molecule in which to attach other water molecules, there is an attraction okay, that kind of keeps them together. It gives water that property. It, it's that property that allows water, if you, you fill the glass up with water, it allows you to kind of bring it above the brim. Okay. So, let's move on. Intermolecular versus intramolecular forces. Intramolecular forces occur within the atoms of a molecule. So let's go back to that example of um, water. There is a intermolecular force that is keeping these two, the, these these atoms together. Very strong bond to break. Okay, very strong, strong bond to try to break. And while intermolecular forces are between more than one molecule. So we'll have, as we showed you guys, I'm going to simplify the diagram and just do it this way, where the slightly negative um, oxygen is going to be bonded to the hydrogen of another water molecule. So there is a attraction between an attraction between the slightly negative oxygen with the slightly positive hydrogen, and the same thing goes with another oxygen molecule, let's say, of water, where the oxygen is slightly negative, the hydrogen is slightly positive, and there's an attraction here. And, and, and so what we have here, what I've demonstrated, are three molecules. that are held together by an attraction between the positive and negative ends of the actual atom. While the intramolecular force kind of looks at the actual bond itself and the attraction that occurs between the actual atom with the other atoms that are surrounding the, the entire molecule. So which bond is strongest? Well, obviously the bond that actually holds the entire molecule together.